Throughout the years, there have been few characters that are constantly referenced as much as Marco Bot. Years after the fact, Marco's murder stands as one of the most important moments for Reiner, Annie, and that quiet dude. Whatever happened to him? So just exactly why is the death of the commander of the 19th Trainee Squad so important, and just how did he impact Attack on Titan? We'll discuss just that, but before we jump in... Did you know that we're nearing 800 followers on Twitter? When we reach 1500 followers, I will be holding a pretty big Attack on Titan themed giveaway. So if you're interested in what I have to say about anime outside of Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, or 86, or you just want to ask me a question and converse with me, then follow me on Twitter at ctacticsyt. Since Marco's death occurred so long ago, way back in season one, I think it's important we get caught back up on who exactly Marco Bot is. Well respected by many people, it's really hard not to immediately be gravitated to someone like Marco. A pure and noble person, he is idealistic and most importantly grounded and self-aware. This led to Marco often being someone who in the face of conflict could confront it and defuse it without much damage. Damage. He is also 7th among the top 10 scoring candidates fitting in between John, who ranked 6th, and Connie, who ranked 8th. His goal is to join the military police as serving the king to him would be a genuine honor. Though unlike John, who wants to live a life of comfort and ease, Marco does it to genuinely want to serve his people. That being said, even during their training, Marco had a high aptitude for battle. In a mock battle, Marco wouldn't eliminate some titans and leave them for the rest of the cadets. The reason for this is because in a real battle, he wanted to act as a distraction so that others could take them out for the kill. This surprised many people who then wanted Marco to become a leader of some kind, but he instead argues that it should be someone like John instead. Marco treated the situation very calmly and used this to not bring up himself, but others around him like John. This is important as Marco becoming friends with John was a natural fit for the two. Marco was a very supportive friend to him and could motivate him in such a way to do better, but also was able to figure out his weaknesses so that he could approve upon them. In many ways, Marco is the best friend that John ever had, and his death may have stunted John's growth in the short term. Though nothing good can last forever. In the Trosh the District, when the Colossal Titan attacks, sending in a flood of pure titans, Marco Marco is murdered by Annie Leonhart, Reiner Braun, and someone else. During the Battle of Trost, Marco's resolve is seen many times and in varying degrees of lights throughout. Marco, while providing a strong moral boost to many soldiers, and even using his tactic of acting as a decoy, which comes in very handy, is also often seen worrying about their future and even at one point almost accepting his death after running out of gas for his 3DO gear. Year. This continues as at one point he even tries to look towards Sasha as an example to remain positive in such a grim situation and even stopping Daz's suicide attempt at one point. This all leads to Marco being assigned to a squad with Annie, Reiner, and a guy during the operation to retake Trost. By accident, Marco actually overhears Reiner and that thing talking about their roles as titan shifters, which Marco at first doesn't even believe leave, but Reiner makes a judgment call and pins him to the ground and orders Annie to remove his 3DO gear. Then they tie up Marco and watch as they let a Titan eat him. His final words were, we haven't even tried to talk this out yet. I think what makes Marco's death so striking and memorable is those final words. Even when realizing that Reiner and the life form were most likely Titans and the enemies, he held out hope they'd be able to hash it all out. So how did his death impact those he was murdered by? Well, for Annie, who was commanded by Reiner to remove his 3DO gear, she was obviously traumatized by this event, and she obviously in some form regrets what she did to Marco, even to this day. For puny, puny man, he simply stood by and watched. He didn't make much of an effort, and even in moments before his own death, all he could do was cry out for Reiner and Annie to save them, a pathetic human being who deserved everything he got. 
For Reiner, much like a lot of things he's done in life, he's come to regret his actions, especially what he did to Marco. His death caused Reiner to develop a split personality disorder, and moments after the Titan killed Marco, Reiner, out of rage and confusion, kills the Titan. The trauma of watching his friends die right in front of him due to his own decision simply broke Reiner. This ended up becoming one of, if not the most scarring and traumatic moments of Reiner's entire life, and rightfully so. A nice little detail tell of Marco's death helped actually exposed Annie as being the female Titan. She took Marco's 3DO gear and because Armin helped him set it up, he was familiar with it, thus when asking Annie about her 3DO gear being so similar to Marco's, she sells him a story on how she found it. Yeah, I bet Annie. Just like how I found that link to Mikasa Cross Annie fanfic. Joking aside, due to this slip up, they were able to get a jump on the female Titan, which ended up causing Annie to harden and trap herself inside a Crystal for nearly a half a decade. Though Marco's most important impact on the series is, of course, the conversation after Paradis and Marley choose to unite to take down Aaron Yeager. Four years after his death, Reiner tells them about his final words, and as John, Marco's best friend, says, this is something they should have always done. They were all constantly fighting against one another and never thought to just hear each other out and talk. It's immensely profound that Marco's final words and death can have such an impact so many years later on everyone that the memory of him drove them all together. This scene is the ultimate realization, in my opinion, of Marco's character and why his death may have been just as important as the possibility of him living through it all. Marco's death had drastic effects on pretty much everyone who knew him. John decided to join the Survey Corps instead of the military police to honor his memory, and this is because Marco saw something in John that he didn't see himself and brought that out of him. For Reiner, it gave him immense guilt for his actions and probably was the first domino in Reiner realizing how much he's messed up in his life trying to chase after an unrealistic dream and goal. This simple side character had that much of an effect on the story and you only have to wonder what his effect on Attack on Titan could have been if he survived. If you think about it, Marco living would have many drastic effects on so many different outcomes. First of all, if he was successful in having talks with Reiner, Annie, and the Third Wheel, maybe they would have joined the side of Paradis. This would be a huge boon for them, as not only would they learn the origins of Titans and Marley much earlier in the story, but they would also gain the power of the armored female, colossal, and jaw titan, making them pretty much unbeatable. Plus, they would be able to go into the basement much quicker, saving so many people from death. Just think about it. Without Marco dying, you'd be saving Ymir, who wouldn't be eaten by Porco. Erwin wouldn't have to charge in, as the Beast Titan surely couldn't take on that many Titan shifters at once. Levi would still have a girlfriend. Good for Petrus, he deserves it. Hanj would still have Sunny and Bean, so on and so forth. Attack on Titan would be that meme where the story of AOT would just be much shorter without his death. And I'm sure you realize it too. It's funny because Isayama released an illustration of what Marco would have looked like in the year 854 if he survived. Looking at that image, I think about what his role would be like in the series. Much like Sasha was the beating heart of Attack on Titan, of course you can check my video out on Sasha in the cards above, but I believe Marco would fit into the very same role that Sasha's character did pretty much, obviously with much less goofiness and eating things like a vacuum. Marco would be the voice of reason in the trio of John, Connie, and Sasha, while John would be the leader. And if that doesn't suit your fancy, he could very well just be in the same squad as Reiner, Annie, and that one dude I forgot the, the existence of. It's just sad, you know, what could have been. But that's the beauty of Marco's character and the legacy that he's left behind. This one singular event was a major turning point for many characters and events in the series. And because of that, Marco's character is a gift that keeps on giving, even when he thought his death was something completely innocuous. In my opinion, Marco's death should be seen as one of the most important events like Erwin's charge or Kenny's death, just as examples. And especially so, if you consider the events of season one alone. So rest in peace, Marco. You were one of the good ones.
With that being said, at 50 channel members, I will produce a One Piece series where I review and talk about One Piece. As well, you get exclusive access to unique badges and emotes you can use during live streams. And thank you to new channel member, Lord of Dragon 555. If you enjoyed this video, then check out my video on Flock Forester or my video on Gabby Braun. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.